It's that time again. A A clutch here. And you know, not every clutch that we produce is bangers, you know? And what I mean by that is that, you know, I like to produce some common stuff that is just really good popular animals as well. Honestly, this year we're probably producing a little bit higher end than I normally produce, to be honest with you. But this just happens to be a very pretty normal ball python that's bred to this beautiful banana spinner blast. So basically it's a pastel, it's a spider, it's a pinstripe, and it's a banana. And it's just gonna produce a bunch of really cool entry level ball pythons that people are gonna love. And I like to produce a lot of them. As a matter of fact, last year, a good majority of my clutches were like this. This year, not as many are, to be totally honest with you. So we really didn't breed that many kind of more common things this year. We went for slightly higher end stuff, not super high end, still able to be afforded by people for sure. But nevertheless, I like some of these clutches. So let's see how many eggs mama has. And it looks like she's got one little egg out of the bunch right here, which is no problem. We'll just candle this one, make sure it's okay. And then it looks like, oh, mama looks upset. Mama, it's okay. Whoa, come on, mama, it's okay. Tell you what, these girls like to protect their eggs sometimes. Come on, girl, wow, what a beautiful clutch of eggs. Mom, you did really good. Come on, let me just take your eggs, girl, I know. She's like, no, I'm protecting my eggs. And these look pretty soft, so they probably were, whoa. Ooh. Come on, girl, it's okay, it's okay. She won't let them go quite yet. She's still giving me a little bit of a battle. It's okay, honey. Okay, come on, get going, sweetheart. I'm gonna take this egg out right here. And then, oh, look at her. Oh, she is not gonna let these eggs down. Come on, mom. Whoa, come on. Good, she's a good mom. Woo, woo. Come on, girl. She's giving me a heart. I tell you what, there haven't been many clutches that have been this difficult to pull. This girl is really doing a job protecting her eggs. Look at her. She just keeps coming back. Whoa. Oh my goodness gracious. Girl, calm down. It's okay. I promise I am going to take good care of your eggs. Woo. Finally got him out of there. I tell you what, we'll get mama cleaned up, get that egg smell off her so she doesn't have that maternal instinct going on. Get her back onto food really quick. But look at this clutch of eggs right here. Ooh, doggy. That is a beautiful white pearly clutch of eggs. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten more eggs hitting that double digit this year. That's absolutely amazing. Ooh, doggy. I tell you what, that girl gave me a run for my money. But what a beautiful clutch. I'm actually going to show you guys Heinz and French's here, the albino iguanas. Now, I'm talking a little bit low because, again, these guys don't have good eyesight so as I climb in here of course they're already looking around look at Heinz looking like where is he coming from and that's the thing about albino iguanas their eyesight's not very good but look at how absolutely big Heinz is getting I'm just gonna touch him just like this and just kind of interact with him because I want him to not get upset when I'm in, right? These are the two iguanas that we're really hoping we can get really habituated to be able to come out and actually interact with people. And green iguanas are oftentimes pretty hyper, but the fact that these guys don't have good eyesight actually calms them down a little bit. And you can see, even just petting him, he's actually pretty chill, he's okay. And look at how big he's getting. I mean, that's incredible. And of course, Frances is right down here. Hey, Frances, how are you doing? And again, just this little bit of interaction like this actually is kind of habituating and socializing them to actually kind of get habituated to being touched by human beings right so I could not be happier with the way these guys are doing they're so big remember when I got them they were like this big I mean these are incredible I love them so bright so beautiful I tell you what they're amazing you guys know that I'm always talking about the newest movement that's taking over the reptile hobby and that is reptile army that's right that's right you need to go to reptilearmy.com join the army be part Part of this infantry that we have out there changing people's lives. Matter of fact, Reptile Army just sent me something, so I'm gonna go ahead and see what is in here. Oh, let's see here. All right, all right, all right. Oh, look at this, man. I am, ooh. All right, guys. Now we're ready, bro. I'm ready, that's right. You can get your hats, you can get your shirts, you can get hoodies, you can get socks, you can get joggers, you can get backpacks, all that type of stuff. And when you're repping the Reptile Army, what are you doing out there? You're telling people what the Reptile Army is and that reptiles are awesome. So we need you to join the movement. 10% of the proceeds go to USR. The rest of the proceeds go to educating people. So go to reptilearmy.com and join the army. Lori's out of town today and boy did she leave me some strict instructions about the fact that I gotta check every single one of these cages. And if I mess up, I'm in big trouble because she's worked really hard on it. So go ahead and roll that time lapse.
All right, went through all the animals on this side and that side. Looks like we only got two clutches today, but Lori will be happy at the diligent work I have. What do you say we pulled these couple Kluber clutches? So let's go ahead and jump into the first clutch here, which is actually this beautiful, what they would call either a going eye, a blotch king, or if you really want to get fancy, they call them Appalachian Coley County King snakes right here. So we'll get her cage all cleaned up, get her some water, all that good stuff like that. I mentioned all the time I pull water a day or two before, so they don't lay their eggs in the water, uh, but certainly they always have water. I promise you that. Regardless, beautiful. Beautiful clutch, holy moly, that thing is beautiful. Wow, we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 eggs. And these hatch a little bit quicker. A lot of Kluvers take about 60 days. These take about 50, 52 days to hatch out. So 52 days from now, we're gonna have a bunch of beautiful Blotch King Six. And when they're born, they're really red and beautiful animals. I mean, these are gonna be rippers when they born. Can't wait, let's collect that last clutch. Go now, go now. Stop doing that. Oh. <laughs> Alright guys, so Lori got these flowers for Drogo, but um, we're going to try to feed it to Diddy and Dixie today. Last year we gave them dandelions, I think they're called, or some flowers, or whatever you people call them. Um, and they loved them, so let's see if they like the hibiscus. Oh, look at them together. Oh my god, they're ready. Come on. That's what Brian does. So I've been working on this thing with Dixie, so I, I like, want her to learn to walk just right up my arm. You can see, she kind of does it, right? Yeah. Right, right, did he? Say yeah. Come on, you're almost there. Mm. Look at that balance, look at that precision. You deserve it. Ooh. You like that? Diddy, come on, stop yelling. Just come out here and get some. Don't you bite her. Okay, guys, so obviously, I guess I should have got two flowers. She bit my knee. Obviously, we should have got two flowers. <laughs> okay. All right, well now it's crazy. Oh, you can't have the whole thing. She still needs some of it. Stop, don't bite my fingers either. Okay, so they really like it. That's awesome. Oh, there you have it. They love the hibiscus. Then the last clutch is actually this girl right here. Beautiful snake. This is actually what we call a mosaic California king snake. And this is a polygenically bred animal to produce an animal that has just this really interesting black, pattern down its back and then the kind of mosaic pattern on the sides and they can be really variable to be totally honest with you that one is a good example of one for sure sometimes they can have wide striping on them I mean there's just a bunch of really cool ones regardless let's see how many eggs she has really big eggs too we got one little egg right here that's not in the clump and then the rest of the clutch is right here but I tell you I see something interesting in here guys that I want to point out and this happens sometimes with king snakes see this goop right here where it looks like you can see a pattern of an egg that is actually where she probably ate an egg that's right that tells me that she actually ate some eggs I don't see any signs of her eating any of the other eggs but there was probably more eggs in here last night than there is today unfortunately so there is two four six eight eggs left no clue how many eggs she may have eaten, to be totally honest with you, but that is definitely a sign of it, and king snakes every now and then do it. What a cheeky little monkey. Nevertheless, eight good eggs. I certainly don't show leopard geckos nearly enough love, because we have a ton of really cool leopard geckos. This happens to be a really cool bold stripe max snow white and yellow that thing is an absolute ripper but the truth is we have literally hundreds and hundreds of leopard geckos that are just absolutely incredible so i definitely need to do a better job of showing them some love because i really do love them a lot and for whatever reason i just don't showcase them nearly enough so noah and i both decided that it would be best to actually move the baby argus monitors up here and jessica did a beautiful job no look how amazing that looks i mean does that look cool Skull or what so uh what do you think i'm ready to move them in are you? all right i'm ready well it's, they're your your animal, so you do, do it. it. Do it. All right, so as these guys got warmed up, they definitely got a little bit more hyper than when they came right out of the bed. Remember when you first unboxed them, like, oh my God, they're so tame. Well, they're still tame. They don't bite, but they are definitely lightning fast. So Noah's gonna give it a go and see if he can get them without actually having them run away from them. There you go, there's the first one. And like I said, you can see it kind of wiggly and stuff like that, they like to run. But once they actually get in your hand, they calm down pretty well. So I know with Noah working with them constantly, what do you think, you think you're gonna be mellow? Oh yeah, they'll be mellow out soon. I think there's just, yeah, they're just babies. So they they don't know anything yet. We just have to teach them, have to give them lessons, have to, you know, teach them all the things that old Argy knows. Exactly. So let's go ahead and put the first one in and see what it's like. See that? Look at how it's look. just chilled out. Just chill. You can give him a little pen, oh, chin scratches. Yeah. And then I'm going to release him now that he's calm. There you go, buddy. Bingo. Now he's oh. got a new habitat. Stay in there, bud. Stay in oh, there. He's going to be fine. That looks beautiful. So, oh. all right, uh, let's get a uh, little Argus number two. Um, he's usually under this one. Oh, yeah, there he is. There we go. Going to scoop him up right there. And this guy is the smaller of the two. He is Yeah, this is one of the triplets. Yeah. yeah. And okay. we still don't have him named yet, but 
We need to get on that. We haven't. Yeah. I haven't even been thinking about it too much. There we go. He's calmed down. Give him a That's couple perfect. chin scratches and release him into his new habitat. Here you go, buddy. Come on, bud. Enjoy. He's like, no, I'm not coming off, Dad. There you go. <laughs> awesome. They're gonna love this. They're gonna look great in here, and it's a good opportunity for them to kind of be out on display while Noah works with them for a bunch, and then when they get really docile, maybe we can start bringing them out for people to handle. So uh, keep up the good work, Noah. Already awesome. You guys know that I've been saying black and white cow kings are an animal I think that people are really sleeping on as far as contrast, beauty, all those types of things. And these actual striped black and white cow kings, oh my gosh, these things are ridiculous. I mean, just look at how clean that looks with that racing stripe. I mean, it's just amazing. And again, you can actually find these in localities in the wild just like this. So this isn't a designer morph. So when you get into just the black and white cows, they're striped black and white cows, they're amazing. And then you start polygenically breeding them for higher white and larger bands and all that stuff. Like I said, I really do think that black and white cow kings are gonna be one of the big up and coming snakes this next couple of years where people are just gonna really truly appreciate them, much like what happened to the Mexican black king. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, here is a playlist of eggs hatching. That's right a bunch of baby snakes hatching on this side. Can you do me a favor and subscribe to this channel? Would mean a lot to me, really would. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.